if you knew you were enough? What would your life look like? What would love look like? This is the Enough Factor Broadcast, where we're redefining what makes you enough in life and in love. Now here's your host, Suzette Virna. Hello everybody, it's your life coach and relationship solutionist, Suzette Virnon, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Enough Factor, where we help you redefine what makes you enough in life and in love on your own terms. Now, over the last couple of weeks, I've been featuring my P2P, Purpose to Platform Sisters, and everything has been about purpose. Herdeen Mercier told us there was purpose to grief. Dr. Vernelle Delon told us there was purpose to our pain. And today, I'm so happy to welcome my sister, Erica Davenport, who's going to talk with me further about purpose and let you know that purpose is not lost. Now, let me tell you something about Erica. Other than being a wonderful person that I feel privileged to have gotten to know when I was in the Purpose to Platform program. She is the founder of She Pursues Purpose and leads women of faith into discovering and walking in their purpose. Now, as a purpose coach, Erica helps women who are unfulfilled and unhappy with their careers to create businesses in alignment with their calling. You see, she personally understands the struggle of balancing work life and home life and all while questioning the meaning of life. And so Erica is passionate about helping women to identify their God-given gifts and strengths in order to profit in their purpose. She pursues purpose offers a variety of resources that bring inspiration, education, and transformation to every purpose-driven woman. And so without further introduction, join me in my conversation with purpose coach and P2P sister, Erica Davenport. Welcome, Erica. Thank you so much for having me, Suzette. I'm so excited to talk to you today. I am so excited. Before we came on, we were talking about how we had not had a chance to connect in a long time. Yes. Kind of, you know, drive-bys with social yes. media, but not really talking. And so I find that this right here, I'm so happy about podcasting because it allows me to have a chance to really have really good conversations yes. with people that I really want to hear from. So, and you're one of those people. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Now to launch into the conversation, I want to invite you into what I call truth and dare. Okay. Now, The good news is, it's not like the traditional truth or dare. The bad news is, you don't get to decide. (laughs) I'm ready. You're ready? Okay, so here it goes. What is the truth that your purpose required you to see and dared you to take radical action on? The truth, um, I would say, is that for the longest, I was looking externally for my purpose. And what purpose required me to see is that it had already, it has always been on the inside of me. So, you know, while I'm trying to get more degrees and do all these things to fulfill my purpose, I really, I realized it was always on the inside of me, which dared me to do it afraid. Like I had to learn once I knew that my purpose was already inside of me, once I knew that I was equipped with everything that I needed to pursue, I had to get comfortable with pursuing scared, (laughs) going forward and doing it afraid. I love that because that's the thing about purpose that I found, and I'm sure you will co-sign on it, 
even if you're afraid, I mean like knees knocking, there is something inside of you that will not let you rest. Right. It will not let you rest. And I really picked up on that with you. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you were kind of quiet with it, but there was a resolve, even in your fear, mm-hmm. because we both were in the same group trying to figure out this, this thing, put some substance and structure around this impulse that was moving us towards something. And, and your quiet resolve was really, really there, even when you did not think it was. And I've learned that when people have that kind of burning desire where their purpose takes over them, usually there's a story. Yes. Something happened to move you to that place of commitment. Do you mind sharing that with the listeners? Absolutely. So my story started off probably like many of your listeners. Um, I was working a job. I have a degree. I'm a great mom. I'm a great wife. But I really felt like something was missing, you know, like I knew there was more to me. I knew there was more for me, but I didn't know what that was. I didn't know where to start. But there was just this this burning desire on the inside, like, God, what can I do? You know, what do you want me to do? And so I always tell my story about what I call my personal retreat, a spiritual retreat right at home. And I really just got serious about um, my personal development, my growth, surrounding myself with like-minded people. And I really began to explore and become a student of myself and realize, okay, what can I do? How can I help people with what I have now? Instead of, you know, trying to add to myself, how can I, how can I serve people with what I have now? And it really, my company started off um, as a blog. I like to read and I like to write and I like to inspire people. And it started off just as me inspiring and and encouraging women through a blog that turned into a movement that turned into a published book and, and coaching course and all of these things. But it really was just knowing that there's more to me than being a wife. You know, I know that God didn't just call me to be a wife and to be a mom and to work a job that I'm not even fulfilled at. I know that there's more. And so I just became relentless in my pursuit to discover what God had really created me to do. Mm -hmm. That meaning thing. Mm -hmm. Why am I here? Because you're right. All the achievement part runs out after a while. Yeah. Chasing the degrees, chasing the shiny objects, you know, this over here, that over there. And you live long enough to know that all the creature comforts are not enough to fulfill you but there's got to be something inside of you. And how would you, how would you relay that to someone who is a high achiever? Because, you know, one of the things about high achievers and I'm a recovering one, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I told somebody, I put my running shoes on the shelf, hustle and hustle and grind (laughs) is not my name no more, but how do you help a person who has been defined all or most of their lives by the external, by their achievements, by their accomplishments, by what they have, by what they do. How do you tell that person when they say, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know. I've looked over here. Mm -hmm. I looked over there. I've taken these standardized tests. You know, I've done all these different things, but I don't know what my purpose is. How would you lead them into understanding and discovering that for themselves? Um, one of the things that I hear people say a lot, and I believe in the power of words is I can't find my purpose. And I always tell people we find things that are lost, right? We find things like our keys, the remote to the TV, those things are lost and we find things that are lost. So the first thing that I had to realize is, is the mindset shift. There, there's everything that we need, everything that you need is already on the inside of you. So when you're looking on the outside for something that you that you think is lost, you're never going to find it. And I think that's where we, um, you know, look for more titles and more degrees and more shiny objects to fulfill 
something that's not even lost. And it really starts with you looking on the inside. I'm a, I'm a big believer that in order to know your God given purpose, you have to know the God that give that purpose. And that's where I started. I didn't start with a business idea. I didn't start with, you know, all of these things. I started with saying, okay, what am I naturally gifted at? What do people come to me for? How can I serve people? And I think we get confused at times because we think we can choose our purpose. Just because you can choose the degree, you can choose your job. God has already chose a purpose for you, which means you get to embrace it or not. But we oftentimes are left unfulfilled in trying to add those external things because we're not willing to um, identify, first of all, and then accept what's already inside of us. Everybody has gifts. And if you really want to figure out and discover the purpose that's in you. You start with your maker and you start with the things that you're gifted at. And oftentimes I have found that more people are closer to it than they realize. They just want another title though, you know, instead of accepting the thing that they're called to do, they want to create something new. And a lot of times it just comes with a mindset shift and then you know, coming out of your comfort zone and being willing to fail, being willing to try things until you come up against the thing that's really aligned with you. Because mm-hmm. I tell you, one of the things that really I, all, I have been following, you, as I said earlier, and reading what you've been, been posting and, and seeing your commitment mm-hmm. to purpose. And I think what really caused me to say I've got to get her on my podcast right now was when you posted that prayer okay. that prayer where you were praying for your sisters and saying oh Lord please don't let them be distracted from their purpose yes. please don't let them be distracted by from their purpose what do you feel like because this is something that I struggled with too when I first came into purpose the platform I had to realize that I had been conditioned almost the opposite, Mm -hmm. not purpose to platform, but platform to purpose thinking. And and God had to tap me on my shoulder. And when I would have those moments where I was trying to figure out my next move, my next step, whether I should get involved in this or I shouldn't get involved in that. And I would have, he'd have to tap me on my shoulder and say, let your purpose lead you. Mm -hmm. What's leading you is you're comparing yourself with other people. Yep. What's leading you is what meaning you're giving giving to what you see them doing. And you're looking and you're looking at yourself saying, this is inadequate. This doesn't measure up. And again, that whole high achieving thing, mm-hmm. that whole high achieving thing. So what what was it? Was that what prompted that prayer? Did you feel it energetically or were you seeing certain signs of it? And if you were, can you tell us what the signs are so that the ladies that are listening to this, when this happens with them, they'll be like, oh, wait a minute. I'm I'm, I'm drifting away. I'm drifting away. Well, I I see it every day. Uh, It's easy. Part of my story that I didn't share is how I lost my identity. Right. And so in my roles of a wife and a mom and an employee and all these external things, I lost who I was as an individual, as a child of God. And I think that's what happens naturally if you're not intentional about being aligned with who you are in Christ. We're pulled in many different directions every single day. And then we have the pressure of social media. We have the pressure of these titles that we're trying to live up to. And in the meantime, we're losing who we are as individuals. Before you were a mother, you was a child of God. Before you were a wife, before you were a business owner, you was a child of God. And so I think it's really important. And I submitted that prayer because I see it every day. We neglect ourselves. We put our desires, our dreams, our goals to the back burner to fulfill these external roles. And as a result, we're unfulfilled on the inside, you know, and for me, I was, I wouldn't call myself a high achiever, but I was definitely a perfectionist. And I definitely wanted everything to be right. But I realized in many ways, it was an insult to God 
because he's the one that's going to make everything right. It's my job to obey. It's my job to do what's scared, but it's not my job to try to control the outcome, try to control the people, try to control the circumstances. And so I submitted that prayer really just to encourage women. Yes, it's easy, you know, to, to lose yourself, but when you lose yourself, you're also losing the purpose that's on the inside of you, you know, because you're going after things that doesn't matter. You know, I tell women all the time, there are rich people, successful people who do not know their purpose, you know, and the key, if you really want true meaning and true fulfillment is to do the thing that you were created to do. And people oftentimes want it to be this big grand thing. And it's all big and grand in my mind, if this is what God has equipped you to do. But in the same note, we want to look a certain way and want to appear a certain way. And it's like, whatever that is, if your purpose in life is to bake cookies and bring a smile on people's face, then bake cookies and put a smile on people's face because that's what he created you to do. And that's where the true fulfillment and the true meaning is going to come from. Yeah, because people, I think people have, I don't want to say sexified, because I don't think that's a word. <laughs> but I think people have equ- equated purpose with this pursuit of success mm-hmm. or chasing a dream. And how can people tell what's their motivation? Because purpose ain't always sexy. Nine times out of mm-hmm. 10, purpose ain't sexy at all. That's right. You know, we might put lipstick on it. But what we have to do in the background to be purposeful, it ain't sexy. Not at all. And so how do you help people? Because I think they're getting it confused. Mm-hmm. When people, I think people, when they say, I want to know what my purpose is, they're saying, oh, I want to find that sexy dream that's going to fulfill me and make me successful. And I'm going to be OK and I'm going to be somebody. Yeah. Don't you think? Is that yeah. what you, you come up against as well? Yeah. And I I think it's really how we define success, you know, Mm -hmm. because some people define success as having a lot of money. Right. Mm -hmm. For me, being successful is really doing and being the thing that you were created to do and be. And I think sometimes people don't even think deep enough. They don't even in their mind process. Okay, with the money. What am I, you know, what, what's next purpose is really about solving a problem and it's always helping someone else. And, you know, we know the scripture is better to give than to receive, but the truth is when you're giving in your, in your lane of purpose, you're always receiving that fulfillment and that meaning. And that's why enough is never enough when it comes to people who define their purpose by money, who define their purpose by success. Because it's just this hamster wheel you're on and you're not fulfilled. You're just getting a lot of money. You're, you have a lot of followers or whatever the case may be, but you're not really helping mankind. You're not solving a problem. You're just making money and money can't fulfill us. It just can't. You, you're not even making an impact. No. Not a real one. Mm-hmm. I, I learned a long time ago that pe- impressed people don't commit. Yeah. We can do a lot of things to impress people, but that doesn't mean they're going to commit. It doesn't mean that they're going to receive what it is that we're serving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think for such a long time, I thought, well, if I make my marketing slicker, you know, if I put all the if it looks as good as this other person's, if I if I do that that way, then people are going to be impressed with me. And if they're impressed with me, they're going to want to hear what I have to say. Right, right. But I've learned it's easy to impress people. Yeah. It's very, very easy to impress them. But in, just because they're impressed with you doesn't mean they're going to really allow you to serve them yeah. and invest in what you're offering them to serve them. That's right. People, people are like a pretty picture all day long. But the real impact comes when you're alleviating pain for someone. The real impact comes when you're solving a problem and when they're hurting and you're meeting that need. You know, the real impact comes from you utilizing your gifts and your abilities to make somebody else's life feel better. 
And I think Mm -hmm. that's where we get things or people kind of get things confused because just because you have a lot of followers or you have a lot of money does not mean you're making a lot of impact. And I would assume Mm -hmm. that you're also, you know, not fulfilled as in fulfilled on the inside because you're just, it's all about you. And the thing about purpose is it's not about you at all. And that's why it's not pretty because you got to do a scare and you got to go live when you don't want to. I'm an introvert and I've always had a quiet resolve. I've always been shy, but my purpose required me to come to the forefront and I'm nervous every time I'm called to, but I'm willing to show up. And every time I show up, people are saying how something I said or posted or or have done has blessed them. And that's what brings me fulfillment. And that's what brings me meaning. But purpose isn't about you at all. And I think that's the misconception. Mm -hmm. People think that it's something that, you know, they get to choose that they want to do. And it's just not always the case. It's what you're gifted to do. Mm -hmm. But you don't always get to choose. Yeah, it comes out of integrity, doesn't it? Yes. Integrity with with the divine inside of you that determined and selected you to fulfill his his plan. Yes. Not your plan. Because I think about even, um, I know by the time this airs, it will be, probably a a lot more time from the storming of the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And I can almost imagine that policeman that led those uh, mobsters or terrorists, they've been called many, many things, but led those people away from the Senate chamber. He might have thought his purpose was one thing, one dimensional, right? But I really believe in that moment, his purpose became very clear. Absolutely. And so there, I, and I, I feel like purpose has different dimensions, that mm-hmm. there is that sense of something calling you, that sense that you're serving something bigger than yourself in one dimension. But at any given moment in time, a greater purpose can be revealed in that moment at that time. Yes, I totally 100% agree. And I have to tell some of the women I serve at times, like just because you may not know one part of your purpose does not mean you're not fulfilling others. You know, you, you're you still called to be a mother. You're still called to be a wife. You're still called to, to be whoever you are in this moment. And that's where I think people get stuck because they're looking for the one grand thing when it's like, honestly, you are fulfilling your purpose every single day. Yes, with every single movement. Mm-hmm. That That's why I think that scripture where, where Jesus says, I and the Father are one. Mm-hmm. I don't do anything except I see him do it. Yeah, That means when I hear that, and I've never heard it that way until you and I started talking, He was purposeful in every step he took. Yeah. It wasn't a matter of, well, when I get to Samaria, I'll be purposeful. Mm -hmm. Or when I go to the synagogue, I'll be purposeful. Or when I'm, you know, uh, with my disciples, I'll be purposeful. But every single thing was purposeful. Yes. And then the ultimate purpose, dying on the cross, but purposeful all the way through it to it. That's so good, Suzette. Oh my gosh, it's so good because I think about his purpose when he made the lame man walk. That was his purpose in that moment. When he made a blind man see, that was his purpose in that moment. And it's so beautiful because he says, I am the great I am, right? You fill in the blank, whatever the purpose may need to be at any given moment. That's what I am. That's That's the purpose that I am. That is amazing. Mm, 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 And I will mm. submit to your listeners and to everyone that's listening. If you are created in the image of the great I am, then that means you have that same I am power. You can be purposeful in any given 
circumstance, in any given situation, if I am a healer at this moment, if God has called you to heal in some sort of way, you know, to, to supply and meet a need, purpose is occurring in your life every single day. Mm-hmm. And I, I think about that with relationships, because even when I think about the ladies that are wanting true partnership and they want love, one of the things that I feel gets missing in the vetting Mm -hmm. is purpose. Mm -hmm. That should be numero uno. Yes, it should. Before, whether he pulls out the seat or pays for the date or even, even goes to church because there are a lot of people that go to church, but they're still living in a realm of amnesia Mm-hmm. about what their true purpose is. And when you don't know what your true purpose is, then you can't respect somebody else's. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. You know, and, and if you truly respect purpose, then there is a capacity there through the evolution and the experiencing of that person, of that purpose uh, in that person's life. You don't try to hold them in a box. Yeah. Or commit them to a certain era or a certain way of being, you realize, oh, yeah, I'm sharing my life with you. And yeah, we've made vows, but the vow was never for me to take place of your purpose. That's right. And if anything, we want to make sure we're in relationships that add to it, you know, because yes. it is, it's going to evolve and we're going to grow and we're going to discover things about ourselves and our significant others as we go. But we want to be sure, you know, that in this process, they're adding and they're not taking away, you know, and, and yeah. Yeah. yeah Could that add to, and I love that. Oh, because what it brings to mind was the, um, the episode on redefining wealth where Patrice and Gerald mm-hmm. were talking. Mm-hmm. And it it really spoke to something that I think many a single purpose-driven woman asks herself. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, if I'm pursuing my purpose, shouldn't the person that I'm with be pursuing theirs because if they're not pursuing theirs then how can we how can we really build something together and here's here's my experience now I haven't been married but six years okay but I've had two tries before this six years okay this is my third marriage and one of the things that Patrice and Gerald said that I was like, oh my God, this is so true. This is so true. Is my husband isn't chasing what I'm chasing. That's mm-hmm. not his job. That I, I can't look for him to be chasing what I'm chasing in the way that I'm chasing it. Right. Right. But what I lets me know that he's adding to mm-hmm. my purpose is because he takes care of me. Yes. Absolutely. It's how he takes care of me when he knows I'm getting ready to tape. And like Patrice was saying, how Gerald brought her a sandwich because he, mm-hmm. he saw that she had been working all day and wasn't going to get a chance to eat. And he, he fixed her a sandwich and made it look so inviting and so enticing. It's that adding of that person, that person serving something greater too. Yes. Their chase may not be your chase, but they're serving something greater than themselves. Mm-hmm. It's Absolutely. not about them. It's not about when she going to get finished because I'm ready for dinner. Mm-hmm. It's not about that. It's having such a respect and a regard for what you respect and regard. Yes. Yes. That they're convinced to help serve that. And even if they're not, not that um, um, sure of it, their love for you is something greater than themselves. And so I think about the many, many times where I, because I love to work. I can get really lost in my work. But my husband will bring me a cup of tea, you know, uh, he'll, he'll, make, he'll make sure everything is together. 
He never says to me, why isn't this done? Why isn't that done? He just sees how he can serve, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and tries to make it make make it so that I can do what I do with grace and ease and no worry. He doesn't come in and say, you mean to tell me you've been on that computer all day and you ain't done this, that and the third. (laughs) He doesn't do that. And so I've, I've developed a true love and appreciation for a man that serves out of his love for you versus trying to define for him or define what chasing purpose is for him because you might be his purpose. Right. (laughs) Right. right. The kids Mm -hmm. might be his purpose, Mm -hmm. making sure he has a consistent income coming in while you are pursuing what you're doing so that the bills can get paid. That's something greater than himself. And I think sometimes we can get so pigeonholed in the labels and the way things look that we pass over who could be the greatest gift to us because they don't look a certain way and they don't behave a certain way. Is that your experience as well? Yeah, um, you know, definitely. Yeah, I've been married about eight years. And one of the things that I have learned um, as I pursue which is right in alignment with you. It's, it, our pursuit just doesn't look the same, right? But we support each other in the pursuit. I don't understand it. Sometimes I may not even agree with, with the route, but I'm going to support you and I'm going to add to you and I'm going to be there for you. And sometimes that may just be listening or bringing you food or you know whatever I can do to serve you because ultimately that is purpose. It's servanthood. It's, it's giving what I have to give to you in this moment. And it may change moment by moment, but I'm going to give you what I have now and it's going to be my best. Mm -hmm. And I had never thought of marriage as serving. And I think because of media and because of unresolved pain, a lot of people look at relationships as a goal Mm -hmm. to be met without understanding who they need to become. Yes, because I, I that I, I am much different now. Mm-hmm. I've been doing relationship coaching and pursuing relationships for a long, 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 long time. And the person that I am now is very different than my first two marriages, because in my first two marriages, I was looking for validation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was looking for validation in this marriage. However, I knew what my purpose was. But I still had a, de- a desire for companionship. Okay. And I have to believe that was another part of my purpose mm-hmm. because my soul was desiring something that my work mm-hmm. was not fulfilling. It was, it was bringing some fulfillment, but there was still this loneliness. Yeah. And um, I think what gave me respect for the loneliness was that scripture that really typifies why we even exist. That God says, I'm lonely, so I'll make man. That we are God's answer to his loneliness, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so it helped me not to demonize my own or not to... to consider it, oh, that's just your flesh. You know, you should be satisfied with just God and God alone. But if he puts a desire in your heart for something, that really is him. Yeah. Right. And I think, I think we, we sometimes look at relationships as something that's almost romanticized. Like it's, um, it's the pursuit of, of like we pursue success in other areas we'll pursue a relationship Mm because we need somebody to do this and we need somebody to do that. I need somebody to to get two incomes because with two incomes, we can do this. I want to be a power couple because I want this, this, this. Mm -hmm. But we don't understand the serving, the purpose, even in our relationships and the integrity that's required. Um, Would you say that in, in, in the pursuit of purpose, that there are different different depths, depths of purpose, um, and that there's a pursuit of it, 
But is there an even deeper experience of purpose as well? I believe so. I believe, you know, kind of going back to our conversation about purpose being multidimensional, you know, there are those, there's different levels of purpose. And I believe just going back to, you know, God creating man, purpose is also seasonal, right? It's going to, there was a season where God was God all by himself, right? And then there was a season for mankind to come into his creation. And so there's definitely the different depths and, and, and dimensions of purpose. And I think that's where sometimes people get overwhelmed with the thought of purpose or misunderstand the purpose of purpose. Ultimately, my belief is that our number one purpose is to know God, which goes back to why he created us. That was his purpose, right? That's that deep, deep. Now we... The second part of purpose is to make him known. And that is through our gifts. And that is through our call. And that is through all of these things. But that's where it goes from one layer to another. Many people don't even realize they're fulfilling that deepest part. If you know God, he created you because he wants you to know him. If you know God, if you're pursuing a relationship with God, that is your ultimate purpose. That is the deepest purpose beyond. That is the universal purpose for mankind. That's why he created us. And then he downloaded the gifts, the abilities, the talents, and the, the all of these other things inside of us to make him known. But it all circles back to knowing God. Yes. Yes, I totally agree. Because my, uh, I've never been a person to uh, have a word, a specific word for the year. Mm-hmm. or a specific phrase for the year. This is the first time that the word found me before the turn of the year. I was living my way to a greater understanding. It was like it was like God was dropping breadcrumbs <laughs> to the new year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I didn't realize he was kind of like, come here, come here, come here. And what was that? That come here was communion. Wow. That was the word. And I didn't realize that was going to be the word going into 2021 because I I never had a word Mm -hmm. like that. You know, Mm -hmm. I was setting intention, but I never had that clarity of a a divine word. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A single word packed with so much pregnancy, you know, and so um. I was living my way to it because I was feeling, I I think I was getting into an understanding where I was being questioned, why is it that when you first wake up in the morning, you grab your cell phone first? Mm -hmm. Why is it, I was, it was like my actions were being questioned. Mm -hmm. That whisper was kind of like questioning different things I was doing. And in my sitting and trying to ponder, well, why do I do it? And first you have the, 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 this layer of the answer. Well, um, cause I want to check my emails and I want to check this and I want to check that. But then of course, God always asks a question <laughs> behind the question because he's taking you deeper into mm-hmm. your reason. And so we went through all the layers and it, I had to admit the reason that I do it is because I feel like I have to perform at a certain level Mm. else I'm not going to have what it is I need to have Mm. and so it came to a point it's like oh it's trust Mm. it's an issue of trust and I was like oh hmm I had never thought of it that way and it was like well what is it that motivates you to do it? it are you going by my definition are you are you going by the socialization of what you feel like you should be doing right. if you are serious about serving? You're serious. You want to be taken seriously, you know. And I started thinking about all that. And I said, oh, my God, Lord, I'm not serving your definition. I'm serving somebody else's definition mm-hmm. of what qualifies me and mm-hmm. what I should be doing. So as I'm living my way to it. 
I start thinking about the comparison game and how sometimes even when you don't think it's bleeding into what you're doing, you really, the definition you're responding to is comparison. Mm -hmm. You don't realize it because it's very subtle, but I realized, oh my God, it's because I'm comparing. It's almost like, who told you you were naked? Oh, who told yeah. you? you were, yeah, it's like that same kind of question. Like, who told you you needed to, to, to do these extra things yes. in order to, to, to serve a higher purpose? Who told yes. you to be relevant? And so I sat there with it and I said, oh, Lord. And that's when he spoke to me and said, and I was like, how do I stop this psychological unconscious comparison Mm -hmm. this unconscious living up to all these other definitions this comparison of of dealing with the noise and the different things competing for my attention how do I deal with that and that's when the word came communion wow and I realized when that word came up out of my spirit that what had been lacking wasn't the desire to serve. It was the communion piece because what Lord the Lord revealed to me was he said, it's in the communion. It's in the being with. Mm-hmm. Like Patrice says, not a drive-by, right. not a snackable, but a being with. It's like the difference between getting a sexual quickie <laughs> yeah. versus making love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he says, you've been doing the quickie. Yeah. You've been, Lord, I need you to help me with this. Lord, I need you to help me with this. Lord, can you move for me in this way? Lord, I don't know the answer to this. Come in with my list. of uh, Lord, can you help me? Lord, mm-hmm. speak to me. Well, all the list. And he said, I just want to hang out. Yeah. I don't want you always coming to me, asking me for something. Communion means we hang out. We love being mm-hmm. together, being together. And I was like, and it's like, it's been a long time since we've been together. Yes. And I just, it was like, oh my Lord. And then I started realizing, okay, being with is intimate. And there is no way you can be be with God, the divine, higher consciousness, purpose, without being transformed That's right. by it. And he even went even further and said to me, if you check in with me before you walk out that door, then you are prepared for what meets you on the other side of the door. Mm. But what you've been doing is going out. But a, hey, God, how you doing? Yeah, I want you. To, I want you to run with me here. I want you to run with me here. You know, I want you to go with me, but I want you to run with me here mm-hmm. instead of wait before I enter out into that noise, enter out into what I don't know is waiting for me on the other side. I need to sit with my purposeful God because otherwise, I'm going to suffer spiritual amnesia. I'm going to forget who I am, That's whose right. I am, and why I am. That's it. And other people are going to be writing on my definition. But if I sit with God, he reminds me that I am enough. He reminds me that I'm made in this image. He reminds me. And so when I face uncertainty in the world, we've already resolved it before I walked out that door. That's right. And I had never, I had never had that degree of clarity. And so now it's like, God, I don't even want to, I don't want to check my phone. I don't want to check social media. I don't want to do any of that without spending time with you. I'm right with you. I, my my mornings have kind of just morphed into this morning communion with God. And it started back, you know, with the COVID It's just, we started working from home and I had all this time, but now it's like, I can't, if I wake up at 11 o'clock, I can't go eat breakfast or lunch until I've had time with my God. And, and in addition to him reminding you who you are in him, What I've learned is when you're in communion, he reveals to you. He reveals his purpose for you in that moment. He reveals his purpose for you in your season. 
with the presence of God comes the revelation. And so sometimes we're not just we're not still enough. You know, we're not quiet enough to get the thing that we're chasing after because we're we're all over the place when he is saying, I know your purpose. I know what I want you to do today, tomorrow and 10 years from now. But I want you to know me and I want to share with you what I have for you. But you can't get that if you get in these quickies like, no, we need to be intimate. I need you and all of you. And that's why I have what I call five commandments to pursue a purpose. And the first commandment is to know thy God. Without thy God, there is no purpose. You can be successful. You can make money. You can do all of that. But when we're talking about purpose, we got to be talking about God. That's the, the first the first step to it. Can you go through the other steps as well? You, have, you got me sitting here listening. It's like, let me get my paper and pencil out. She's going through these things. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so the first one is to know that God. Back to, in order to know your God-given purpose, you must know the God that gives that purpose. My second commandment is to know thyself, which we've talked about. You have to be know who you are. You have to invest in yourself, your personal growth. You have to take care of yourself. You have to become a student of yourself. I remember hearing a quote that said, you are the way you are because of why you are. So you really have to get to know who you are and what you're made of. The third commandment is to know thy neighbor, which is all about purposeful relationships, engaging in relationships that are purposeful, that helps you to surround yourself with like-minded people. You want to surround yourself with people who can carry you into your calling, not disrupt you from your destiny. The fourth commandment is to plan thy work. Once we know our purpose, that's where we begin to say, okay, let me brainstorm and see how I can serve with what I have now. I don't have to go try to run an app, but let me begin to plan out how I can begin to serve and deliver my gifts to the world. And then the fifth commandment is to work thy plan. We know faith without works is dead. And that's where we have to do it scared. That's where we have to come out of those introverted shells and put ourselves out there to say, hey, I have a solution to your problem. I want to encourage you. I want to inspire you. I want to serve you. And so this is really my method to how I discover my purpose and how I birth She Pursues Purpose. It wasn't easy. It wasn't pretty, but it was it was necessary. And God just continues to confirm and affirm me through the process as he does everyone that's just willing to do the work. Oh, to everybody listening truly is coming across truly this is your purpose it truly is. and, and I, I i interview different people that have so many wonderful stories and so many and, and they're purposeful in a variety of ways but i have to say this conversation i'm feeling the weightiness of the work that you and god have done together Wow. I don't always feel the weight of it, mm -hmm. but I truly feel that wow. coming Thank from you. you. And I know the listeners will too. Oh. So, oh my goodness. So Erica, tell the listeners how they can get in contact with you and what your final takeaway that you want them to leave you. Um, I'll start with the takeaway. I want every single person listening to know that you are called to serve. You do have a purpose and not knowing in this season does not disqualify your purpose. I want those who are at a, un a job that's unfulfilling to them. That does not disqualify your purpose. I want people who are at a job who, you know, they're happy. I want you to know that does not disqualify your purpose. We all have a purpose and you are here on purpose for a purpose. God created you to serve a specific group of people and to solve a specific problem that brings him glory. And it's always um, a reward for you on the other side when you just say yes, when you're just obedient and when you do it scared. And I just want to encourage you to commit 
to fulfill in everything that God has called you to do. Because on the other side is just this inexplicable fulfillment and value that man didn't give you and man can't take away. You won't lose yourself when you know your purpose. And people can find me on, I'm on Instagram and Facebook at She Pursues Purpose. Um, I also have a, my website is, is, is being developed, redeveloped, but you can also find me at ShePursuesPurpose.com. And I have a um, Purpose Chasing Nation, Nation Facebook group. So I'm all over social media. She Pursues Purpose, Erica Davenport. Fantastic. Erica, thank you. Thank you, You have Susan. been such a gift. I got aha moments about purpose that I had never felt or heard that way before. And I tell you, I have, I have been enriched by Thank our time so together. This and listen, fun. oh, fantastic. And listeners, just in case no one has told you, you are worthy. You are worth it. You are more than enough. Bye now. You have just listened to the Enough Factor Podcast with your host, Suzette Fernand. To get notified of new episodes or to dig deeper into today's topic, become a subscriber. And while you're at it, tell us how we're doing and what topics you're interested in. We appreciate your feedback and your reviews. Until next time, remember, you are worthy, you are worth it, you are enough.